Welcome everyone, my name is Kevin DeBrita with Finch Cadillac and today I'm sitting in the all new 2021 Cadillac Escalade. I'm just going to flip the camera around and uh, we're going to try and do a once over in the driver area so you can get a good idea either how to operate it since you own it already or maybe you're thinking of taking one for a test drive and you want to feel more comfortable when you get inside. Let me flip this camera around. There we go. So we are sitting in the Platinum model. So depending on which trim level you have, you may notice some differences, but you will notice a lot of similarities. I'm gonna start out on the far side. If you're familiar with uh, General Motors, you can see we have our uh, blind spot monitors, and this is actually our lane change alert version. So it's gonna let you know when there is somebody in your blind spot or somebody rapidly approaching your blind spot. The way that it does that is it will highlight in yellow or amber when somebody is in your blind spot. And if you happen to have your turn signal on, it'll actually flash yellow. So that's your two stages. One solid, somebody's in your blind spot. Two flashing, if your turn signal's on, uh, the vehicle assumes you are thinking of changing lanes while somebody is in your blind spot. Moving down on the door right across the top, we have our heated and ventilated seats. You will notice for the heated seats, we've got um, both the back and the bottom. And we also have an option just for the back. So great after a long day at work or maybe on the golf course. Below that are our power locks. And then just underneath here, we have our mirrors. So we've got our driver mirror and passenger mirror. They will be adjusted right here. And then we've got power folding mirrors, which will fold the mirrors on both the driver and passenger side, all by the touch of a button. Beside that is your window lockout feature. That's if you want uh, people in the back not to be able to move their windows up and down. Express up and down windows for all four windows. And you'll notice when you're trying to move the windows, there's kind of like a double click. And so if you double click it, the window will go all the way down. Same thing, if you double click it, it'll go all the way up. If you ever want to stop it halfway through, just go again in the same direction that you were going. So I'm going to pull this window up. I don't want it all the way up. I'm going to pull it again and it'll stop. Behind there, we've got our memory seats. Now there are going to be some programmable features you'll want to look at in the uh, main system over here. But what we want to do right now is we want to program the driver seat. Uh, we have driver number one, driver number two, and easy exit. So I've moved the seat kind of back and down to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to program that easy exit seat right now. And so when you hear that three little chime, that means you've programmed the seat. I'm gonna move it a little bit and we're gonna program position number one. And so this is going to actually set up the seat, the steering wheel and your outside mirror. So they will all program into that memory position. Moving over to the dash, I'm gonna start at the bottom here. We have our electronic parking brake that's push to set. And if you'd like to release it, you'll want to put your foot on the brake and push it again. If, uh, if it is on your vehicle, this is our trailer brake controller. If you've got a brake with trailers, you'll be familiar with this already. Essentially, you can set up how much brake you want on the trailer, more or less. And then this is like a brake boost. So if you had to make an emergency stop, you could add more brake power to the trailer. Back in here, very difficult to see if you're sitting in the driver's seat because it's right behind the steering wheel. That is your dash lights and that will control everything up here at nighttime. If you find it is too bright, you can definitely dim it. And if you need a little more light, you can turn it up. So it's just a wheel that rolls up and down. Above here, we've got our uh, auto um, four wheel drive, two wheel high, four wheel high, off road mode. Off-road mode is uh, kind of like a simulated four-wheel low, not something you'd use very often, but uh, if you are traveling slowly over rocky terrain uh, or varying terrain, you may want to have that active mode button. This here is going to move us from off-road mode, activate our tow haul mode, touring mode, and then the uh, for the aggressive driver, we have sport mode. And if equipped, we've got... Uh, LS airbag suspension in this vehicle. We can move it up and down. We're currently at normal clearance. We can go to entry, which is actually a programmable feature. 
And then if we are going off-road, we can move it into the highest position, which is our increased ground clearance. Now the vehicle will automatically, if you've got the high ground clearance on, if you go at highway speeds, it will automatically bring it down. Uh, very cool feature, one I hope I can experience uh, while taking the vehicle for a test drive or two once I have the availability. Moving up here, this is our display. We've got uh, our trip information, our uh, gauge display, which we'll play with in a minute, and then our heads up display, which you may or may not be able to see right now in the uh, center of your screen. So trip odometers, trip one, trip two, and a blank page. That's what we're gonna see here. This is the one everybody loves to see. Uh, right now we're looking at our gauges. Now we're looking at the map if it's been set up. If it hasn't been set up, I'll do that very shortly. Well, that is loading. Ah, perfect. So there is your map display for your navigation. So you can have it displayed here behind the steering wheel. You can also have it displayed on the main display uh, right through the center stack at the top. And the one that a lot of people are curious about is this AR camera. So this is our augmented reality camera. This is exactly what we're looking at out front. And this stays displayed while driving. And if you've got your navigation set up, it's going to um, give you little arrows on both sides when it's time to turn. Uh, very cool, I had the opportunity to drive it the other day. First time driving with augmented reality. I have to admit, it can be a little bit distracting, but, uh, but I did enjoy it, and I think it's something that I would get used to. I also liked being able to have um, the map system here, which is the map from the uh, Escalade, and then over here I was running the Google Maps from my Android Auto. Uh, so nice to be able to have two different set settings, uh, settings running at the same time. Lastly, our heads-up display, we can adjust the height. So if you can't see it in the, uh, in the window, it's probably sitting in the wrong spot. And so you can move the height up and down. You can see it moving a little bit there as it goes just up above the windshield. Uh, and then we can also change the brightness. So if you do find it distracting, you can dim it all the way down so you can't see it anymore. And then you can make it a little bit brighter. And so that's using these display controls over here. If you're still with me thanks for watching uh, we're just about eight minutes in and we've just gone through this side of the vehicle I'm gonna back up so we can have a good look at the steering wheel over on the left hand side we have our heated steering wheel at the top and over here is our gap adjustment this is both for your forward collision alert as well as your adaptive cruise control if equipped uh, with the adaptive cruise control, it's going to keep that gap between you and the car in front of you at a constant. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to drive with the largest gap. Although, if you are in an area with lots of traffic, you may want to put it onto a shorter gap. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of people cutting in front of you uh, while you're driving because the gap is fairly large. Uh, the reason why I like to keep the longer gap is for the forward collision alert feature while in the uh, city. I want to make sure I'm getting as much notice as possible if I just happen to not being not paying as much attention as I should be. Speaking of the cruise control, this is our set and resume switch. This is our on and off button. And you can see when the cruise turns on, you get that little green arrow and that's going to let you know what your cruise is set to. We also have the availability of running regular cruise and adaptive cruise. So you'll notice the symbol changed when I went to regular cruise control. The reason for that is uh, there are times where you won't be able to use your adaptive cruise control. And uh, this will allow you to use regular con cruise control if the system isn't working properly. To give you an example, if you're driving in the prairies for a long period of time and you've got no traffic in front of you or coming up towards you, there's no trees on the side, what happens is the radar system thinks it's not working properly because it hasn't been bouncing back or sending any signals. And so that is the reason why a few years ago they allowed us to turn off the adaptive cruise control. And the way that you turn it off and on is just by pushing and holding this button. You'll see your icon will change and your adaptive cruise is now available. Uh, when just pushing this button 
uh, by itself just once, what that will do is cancel your settings. So if you're pulling up behind traffic and you want to cancel your settings, you'll just push that uh, or tap the brake as you may have done in the past. Below here, we've got um, our voice button. This is for our phone system and voice activation system. And then this is our conversation enhancement. I don't know if you've uh, ever been in a vehicle and you've got people way in the back and it seems like you gotta yell really loudly. Uh, this conversation enhancement will project your voice back there so everybody can hear you properly. Moving over to the other side, we've got our volume up and down. We have our mute button. Uh, and above that, we've got more controls for the radio. So we can go up and down through, um, I'm trying to remember what that one is. Because it's not doing anything. Probably because I have no programs, uh, no um, uh, program set yet. So yes, this would go through our presets on our radio stations. And up here, we'll scan all the available radio stations. Currently listening to FM radio, of course, we've got FM radio uh, XM360, uh, which is a great feature. It's an upgraded satellite radio, which allows you to listen to podcasts that they put up on the radio system for you. It also allows you to pause and rewind your live music. Another enhancement is they've taken the um, OnStar data package and tied it into your XM radio. So as long as you're an XM radio subscriber, if you happen to go through a long tunnel, it'll switch from over the air to over the internet, and you won't even lose any of your satellite radio. So pretty, pretty cool feature. So up and down through the presets, uh, we've got uh, our phone button, music button if we want to change what we're listening to. And then in behind, you've probably seen these plus and minus buttons. That is for the transmission if you're looking to control it manually. While I'm talking about the transmission, you may not have used one of these shifters yet. A lot of people like this top button and believe that to be the shift button, but the reality is right on the side is the shift button. So I'm just going to pull the shift button. I'm going to pull it back and it's going to put us into drive. It's going to tell us we're in drive down here. It is also going to tell us we're in drive right there in the center of the screen. To go into reverse, there's actually two little indents. One, two, and now we are in reverse and you'll notice your camera has showed up. We've got those great HD pictures in our rear view camera as well as our 360 camera over here. We're gonna go back into drive and uh, to get into the low mode or to use these toggles, you're gonna pull it back one more time. And the reason I wanna bring that up is not that because most people are using this feature but if you like to hold on to the shifter while you drive and you make a heavy acceleration, you're gonna pull back on it by accident, which is gonna take you from drive to low. And you'll be wondering, why is my engine revving so high and I'm not going as fast as I want to? And that's because you're in the low mode. So while you are driving, pull it back one more time and it'll put you back into drive. And to park the vehicle, now that we're in a gear, you can see that's illuminated we are now in park. So that park button is right up top. In front of the shifter, a couple of different uh, buttons here. One is our auto hold. If you're on a steep incline or decline, this will hold your brake just a little bit while you transition from the brake to the gas, preventing you from rolling forward or rolling backwards. Auto stop is a feature standard on just about every vehicle we have. When the vehicle is parked, uh, sorry, not parked. When you are stopped and in gear, it will turn the engine off. As long as the car has gotten up to operating temperature and uh, it meets all the conditions, it'll turn the engine off. When you lift your foot off the brake, it will start, start automatically. And it's very instantaneous. Some people don't like this feature. And so they give you the opportunity to turn it off and that will keep the vehicle running all the time. Beside that, this is our lane keep assist. So not lane centering technology, but what Lane Keep Assist does is it, um, Lane Keep Assist will keep you between the lines. So when you start driving, it works over 60 kilometers an hour. 
and you start drifting to one side or the other. As long as you can read the lines on the road, it will read the lines on the road, and it will nudge your steering wheel ever so slightly to keep you back in the center of the lane. If you let it go for too long and it kind of bounces off the lines from the right to the left, then you are going to have the car warn you to grab the steering wheel. So that is our lane keep assist feature. Flip the camera around and see what else we have down here. I have posted another video which goes through this area here, which is your radio and all of your settings. So feel free to check that out online. Uh, and then back down here, this was tied into the other video, but our volume is up at the top. Get a little more music. And this controls our, our main radio system. So we can turn it. We can click up, down, left, right, and then we can actually push down as well, which is our enter. So I want to go over to the uh, home button. I'm going to pull it across, and then I'm going to roll it up. And now I'm in our home button. So while we're looking through here, I'm going to put another video up because this uh, is getting to be about 15 minutes long, but you can see we've got uh, our radio information, our navigation. This is our self parking feature, which is so cool. You can park the car parallel or perpendicular. You can park on the right or on the left. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to try this out, it is fantastic. If you're still with me, again, thank you so much for about 15, 16 minutes into this. There's a lot more information I can go over regarding the Escalade, and I look forward to putting some more videos together in the future. I hope this gives you a great start and helps you feel very comfortable inside your new Escalade. Have a great day.